everyone welcome back to the exotic podcast and on the special occasion of india's independence day here is the first geopolitical podcast from the sixth episode of the exotic podcast and i am very excited to bring you today dr ankit shah ji he needs no introduction he is a true expert in geopolitics and geoeconomics he is a fellow chartered accountant qualified company secretary and a keen observer of foreign policy and security especially in the indian subcontinent he is also known accurately for predicting major geopolitical events like the doklam standoff and the removal of article 370 and the ukraine and taiwan conflicts he is also an amazing author and on today's podcast we will discuss how india can become a superpower will also drive deep into brics gold and the intricate web of geopolitics that shape our future so let's get started and explore these game changing ideas with dr shah and don't forget to leave your comments down in the description section and if you want to contact him his details uh, email and all other website and social media information will be found in the description section so here it is enjoy the podcast and let us know which is the next topic that you would like to hear from him all right let's get started hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the exotic podcast and today i'm very delighted to have dr akit shah ji with us uh, welcome to exotic astrology and the exotic podcast very happy to have you here and today we shall discuss on how is india planning to be a superpower or become one <laughs> what is the indian government doing not just now even in the previous governments or maybe what what do you think ankit ji that the indian government will do and he is a very expert a predictor he is not into astrology but he has made uh, better predictions than all other astrologers all right so the stage is all yours welcome sir please enlighten us jashu <laughs> ram Yeah. Thank you for hosting me on the podcast. Um, well, uh, you are asking me what the government is doing or what the plans are uh, for the future status of Bharat. Well, uh, they have laid out a plan which they call it as Vixit Bharat 2047. And uh, when we say Vixit Bharat, what do we mean? Are we trying to say that we want to achieve a superpower status that's the word that you used as well now sanatan dharm in general has never been taking that superpower status as its goal right right and you would have you know many experts who are western uh, influence i mean influence with the western ideas they'll tell you um that we need to be a superpower or that is a terminology they use they use many time they mock the bharatiya concept of vishwa guru status mm. so first let us understand for the viewers that what is a vishwa guru status when you say guru that comes from the derivative of someone who takes you from darkness towards light okay so when we say the concept of vishwa guru what we mean here is that we will be in a position where countries of the world will come to seek ideas from us mm-hmm. and ask for our guidance for the betterment of their human society this is vishwa guru status now this is completely opposite to what the superpower status is correct correct so we tell you what to do that is <laughs> the superpower status comes from uh, the adesh philosophy of religions mm-hmm. okay dharma comes from the upadesh philosophy of recommendations mm-hmm. there's a big difference between dharma and religion mm-hmm. so when it comes from the adesh philosophy commandments uh, this terminology of superpower means that there will be bombers flying in the sky and the foreign minister of that country will come to negotiate oh yes <laughs> okay so you have policies imposed on you uh, there will be domination 
there will be exploitation of your natural resources. Uh, there will be regime change operations done if if the polity is in not favor of the superpower. Mm -hmm. uh, what that goes to mean is after regime change, the idea is to steal the natural resources or exploit the human potential of that country. Mm -hmm. This is what the superpower concept is. Okay. Vishwa Guru is completely opposite to this. Now, you will be told that the idea of gunboat diplomacy also comes from when Bhishma Pitama went to Kandar, Kandar mm. and asked for uh, the hand for the blind Dhritarashtra. So he also went with the army to negotiate, right? But then when we talk about our uh, ancient Bharat philosophies and dharma, we are always talking about cooperation and the betterment of the people. Now, Gandhar, which is, uh, which was even back then shown about the game of dice and uh, the people who are gambling, people mm -hmm. who are more into liquor and stuff, right? So it is shown as some outskirts region where uh, many type of vices do prevail. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so when you talk about that gunboat diplomacy, it is again the end outcome we are saying that the merging of two kingdoms in a partnership where these vices can be reduced from the human society. Okay. 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 So even when uh, Bhagwan Ram did a regime change operation in Sri Lanka uh, and established revision, yes. he established revision, right? Yes, yes, correct. That was not for exploiting the natural resources of Lanka. Correct. That was for establishment of dharma. Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay. So never get confused because every time they will tell you, Oh, ye to ancient Bharat may be hua tha. Oh, that will be the argument that will be given. Okay. But you got to understand that the purpose of Vishwaguru status is completely opposite of what the purpose of superpower status is. Mm. Because in, in religion, they believe in one life. So the entire Abrahamic economic concept is based on considering material factor of production as wealth. Mm. Yeah. Any wealth of somebody else that you want to steal. Mm. That is not the case with Dharma. Dharma is focusing on the man factor of production. Mm. Right? So okay. it's a human centric approach. A Dharmic way of living. Establishment of Dharma. Not for exploitation. So, uh, this is a fundamental difference between the two. So, as of now, we all understand that we are not in that position where we can guide so many nations mm -hmm. because you need to have that kind of economic might to first showcase that this much economic might could be achieved without exploiting anybody. Okay. okay? So, at this stage, what the government talks is Vishwa Bandhu status. Oh, I see. They don't talk we won't talk wish for Guru status. Okay. So it's quite far. So we expect by 2047, we, when we reach there, a lot many countries will come on their own to ask guidance for policy changes that they need to do. That is wish for Guru status. And do not forget that a Guru also keeps a stick in his hand. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that there is no violence. Tell me. Tell me. Okay. So, dharma has always been about good versus evil. Correct. That yeah. violence has always been there. Correct. Okay, even Bhagavan Ram with that bow and arrow. Even Sri Krishna with that Sudarshan Chakra. Yes. Right. Every, every Bhagavan carries a weapon. So, there is a flower and then there is a weapon mm. in their hands. Okay. Correct. 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 So, Vishwa Guru status does not mean there is no hard power. There mm. is hard power. But the objective of deploying that hard power is not exploitation of others. Okay? That is a fundamental difference between superpower status and Vishwaguru. So yes, we will never be a superpower. We will be what we should be, ideally. Okay. And uh, it's brilliant as you explained. Like even if you see, uh, I mean, in the Ramayana also, like Dasrat Maharaj, he was known as the emperor of the whole earth you know as it was there but still he was not you know like 
kind of a dictator who was you know like there and you know he was there in Ayodhya Kosal and then every other king was there. That's very brilliant as you said. So now when you said you know that you know, when we reach a particular economic status maybe in loose terms I would interpret it as the GDP number right how much is the GDP. So in your opinion what do you think what could be the number like currently India is like aspiring for the 5 trillion but what do you think where that could start? So uh, I have debunked both the indexes, mm -hmm. GDP as well per capita. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the per capita index, even if the entire wealth is with one person in the country, mm -hmm. the number will come the same for the entire country. Okay. So that index is totally ridiculous. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yes. Repeating again. If the entire wealth of the nation is with one person, till the per capita of the country, that number will come same. Okay. Yes. So it yes. doesn't matter. That index has absolutely no repercussion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It is being imposed by the West on the rest of the world. Okay. I see. Those countries which believe in permanent unit economics mm -hmm. have no relevance of per capita index. Because in a family unit economics, all the expenditure per member expenditure comes to be the minimum and all the incomes are consolidated. Ah, oh, yes, for sure. Now, those countries which operate with hyper-individualism, like the West, mm -hmm. where one cat and one dog is what they call family. <laughs> yeah. For those countries, they need to have high per capita so that each individual is going to be able to buy so many things. Okay, many okay. things. Correct. So it makes sense to them who have 50, 60 percent divorce rates. It mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to us at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, coming back to your index of GDP. Now, this is again, which is imposed post Second World War by the West. Mm -hmm. Now, why did they impose it? If you look at the GDP formula, it adds consumption along with investment. Oh, consumption yeah. is an revenue item. Mm -hmm. investment is a capital item. Mm -hmm. Now, an 11th standard kid can tell you that if you are measuring financial performance of a particular period, all items have to be revenue. Mm -hmm. it, it is a profit and loss account which shows the performance. Correct. Okay. You cannot add a capital item to it. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Now, since they had United States dollar as a single country reserve currency status, they can print as much money as they wish. Yes. Which means to them, which means to them, there is no difference between capital and revenue. Okay. At an average of at an average of zero to three percent interest rates, it is free money. Ah, uh, yeah. And if capital and nothing is revenue. Correct. Okay. So they on purpose added investment in the formula. Because if an Indian businessman goes and takes a loan for, say, example, 10 crore rupees today, correct. he's not going to come to bank for at least a decade. Correct, correct. Right. Because at 9, 10, 12, 15 percent, nobody is going to bear that heavy cost. Correct. Whereas it is free money for the West with that single country reserve currency status. Mm -hmm. So they can take another 10 crore the next day. Oh, I see. Okay, and that, that is how and way back. that is exactly that is exactly how the entire uh, innovation happened because it is free money. Mm. Okay, so that is why they added investment also in the GDP, which is why no other country will uh, ever be topping that index, except the one who has that single country reserve currency status. Okay, so basically you are, uh, if I understand you correctly, you are saying like in absolute numbers, it will be very difficult for not only India, but for any other country till the time US has that standard, the go, this dollar standard to Correct. to that level in numbers. It is absolutely free money. So if tomorrow, if tomorrow entire America does not go to work, mm. clearly its GDP will go up because of the printing of money. Oh, okay, okay. It's a, it's absolutely free money. Okay. okay. <laughs> that is not the privilege which others have. Okay, okay. 
and in the 2020 also we saw this printing because of corona and now so much recession inflation all this is there so the federal so the federal government in the us is the largest employer in the country <laughs> okay and they tell you that this is a free capitalist country <laughs> <laughs> So, how do you think India should approach this or is approaching this because US is like there as this money printing machine? I think, I think, I think a lot of countries are moving towards uh, national currencies trade okay. and BRICS is trying to give a platform to them. Oh. So, this is, all, this is only going to accelerate going further. Okay. But what we are going to see eventually is the BRICS nations are going to come up with their own set of indexes to measure things okay. and come up with their own university rankings and stuff like that. Okay. Because it is more than clear that this all indexes are just bogus. Oh, I see. All the Western, like American-based indexes. Okay, I see. And why like universities <laughs> specific? Any reason for that? <laughs> well, uh, the fact is that uh, the entire narrative and marketing based on this US dollar hegemony is why the universities were having this kind of ranking. And this is not just about universities. This is also about uh, the financial products, mm. right? Okay. So a lot of, lot of financial products are more worse than even bed debts, but they are being given AAA rating and just to keep up the economy going. Oh, I see. It's all, it's all a hoax. And with de-dollarization, all, all these bubbles are going to burst. That is what on my understanding is. Okay. Right. okay. So now in, in case of India, so Bharat, so like the way it is going now, so suppose it reaches, you know, as you said, it is difficult to match up to that level because of the infinite money printing. But suppose... India reaches to maybe a ten trillion dollar mark. So then, do you think this Vishwa Bandhu? I think, I think post twenty thirty five, uh, GDP, if at all the index remains, mm -hmm. it will not be measured in dollar terms. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing, this idea of infinite growth was based on fiat currency format of currency. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So that currency reset is also going to come before 2030. Okay. So you can forget about that kind of infinite growth to happen. Because this very idea that uh, I'm going to become rich just by investing in somebody else's business. Yeah. This idea is collapsing. Because okay. if everybody does not want to work and yeah. just park their money into somebody else's business and make money out of it. Yeah. Uh, the number of population which actually produces some real product has become so small mm. that this entire financial system is going to blow up. Okay. This was purely based on the Abrahamic economic model of one life. Mm. The net-based model where they thought that, you know, we are going to steal the money from the future generation's pocket, take loans, uh, and then... Uh, we'll do hyper-consumption. And that hyper-consumption also was possible only because uh, the rest of the world was fooled with this idea that you have to export to become rich. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. So the West was simply printing their currencies and buying real products by telling Asia and the Eastern nations that you need to export to become rich. Okay. Okay. This is how West kept their climate clean, their natural resources intact, uh, and and the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar decided which city of which country will be polluted. Oh. So, which is exactly why the world is now moving towards multipolarity, okay. where the argument is, you also pollute your country a little bit and sell us some products, then you can buy some products from us. Oh, okay. okay, so that is what this financial reset is about. So they have created this 35 trillion of debt on their head. Yeah. But then because of Abrahamic economics, 
they deployed women for a temporary GDP unit of labor in the job roles mm -hmm. during their fertile years and have lost the birth rate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Certainly. So, so what happens? So what happens in this Abrahamic economics format? You want to steal from the pocket of the future generation by taking loans and spend it right now. But they don't want to give birth to the future generation. Wow. Even, so then who's going to pay? <laughs> so they opened up all their borders. Okay. Oh, okay. They opened up the borders. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay. So not, I'm not saying that the people who are entering from the borders are going to repay the debts. No. Oh. What I'm trying to say is their financial systems would collapse because of the lost birth rates if they don't bring in more productive people inside who are uh, you know, would do some real work with their hands and legs. Okay? Oh, okay. Now, that's another story that these people are not entering for working. They they thought that this printing machine is going to continue and they are going to get a lot of benefits out of it. That is why they are entering. That is their thinking that that is why they are entering. But those who are planning it, they think that this guy will work and we will pay off the debts. <laughs> so those who are entering, they are thinking we will have a life like them. But their uh -huh. purpose of giving entry to them is exactly the opposite. So that they can remain like Exactly. Uh exactly. Because because the West has realized that they are going to decouple with China. Uh, we are going to change the invoices outside of the US dollar valuations. Which means if they want to uh, buy something of $100 from the Chinese or Asians, America will have to make $100 worth of goods in exchange to sell Okay. Right. Okay. So they are not going to get it. They are not going to get it, which means they will have to begin manufacturing home. Mm -hmm. And once the West begins manufacturing home, they will realize what pollution means, what human rights means, right? Okay. What labor means. Yeah. Right? They will learn this thing. <laughs> <laughs> How do you earn money? What is the interest rate? They will learn all this thing. And when a made in US or made in Canada or made in EU product will be in the uh, market for Americans and the Western citizens to buy. Yeah. Uh, and when that will be brought to a price point where they can buy it, uh, the entire Western economies will have to be trimmed by 60%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the American salary numbers will be cut by 60%. The freebies will be cut by 60%. Otherwise, you can't afford a made-in-US product. Okay, I see. Okay. And uh, how do you see, like, India, this multipolar, you know, like, BRICS especially? Like, what do you think they are exactly doing? There's this talk of BRICS currency. Apart from that, what do you think they are doing, like, together or maybe individually also? Well, uh, the idea is very clear that they are not looking for a single country reserve currency. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a multi-currency basket of trade. So the trade is already moving in multi-currencies uh, for trade. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether they name the basket or they don't name it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. My understanding is if they name it, the British currency or whatever XYZ, Maybe small nations will find it uh, a structured path to de dollarize. Even if they don't name it, it doesn't matter because, say, for example, uh, Venezuela wants to trade with Cuba. Oh. They can do India national currencies, Correct. Even, even without calling it a BRICS currency. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. So it doesn't matter whether they uh, declare a BRICS currency or not. It is basically a multi-currency basket. Okay, okay, I see, okay. And one question I want to ask you is about India, you know, India's past, if you see, uh, like, if you go back past 500 or, you know, 1,000, 2,000 years, India was one of the, at, at least in my knowledge, it was a very big exporter of, you know, goods and spices, especially, you know, to Europe and other places. So, uh, do you think that... Uh, the export work is like coming up. Do you think the current government is doing steps to, you know, revamp that or you think it's in some other direction? So 
we got to understand that thousand years back when we were all into an entrepreneurship model family unit entrepreneurship model mm -hmm. these were the core sectors farming manufacturing food processing logistics right uh, and the government is looking for reviving all the sectors besides defense mm -hmm. and space tech right because in 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 a multipolar world you cannot rely on american forces to come and give security till your area mm -hmm. which means each of the regional power will have to develop its own fully functioning economy and military okay. atmanirbhar indigenous tech okay? okay okay so what we are looking at is exports that certainly helped ancient bharat but these were not standardized exports these were customized exports which only the foreign elite could afford to buy okay. this was not for masses this was not mass production it was not for masses okay. it was customized production for the foreign elite which which majority of them would you know pay in gold oh i see okay that is how ancient bharat exports model was in fact in europe this was being discussed that is how they tried uh, you know tried searching where india is they mm. they because they were trying to think that so much gold is going to this country for our country oh, so let us see. find out where it is <laughs> that they are taking so much as payment for sending goods to us okay okay yeah. that is how they got attracted and came searching for us So it was Bharat which drained the gold of the entire world with the exports. Okay. Okay. Now that entire gold and still as yet because as I say, gold is what the real currency is. Hmm. It's all is fake. So do you think like ever ever in the future, not India but the world would any time move towards you know gold as a currency again? It has already started moving. Okay. That is what that is what de-dollarization means. Okay. that the brics nation started collecting physical gold in little quantities that is how the united states dollar replaced pound after the second world war oh, okay i see so, so during the second world war united states collected physical gold in exchange of war supplies from the european airlines and once it collected all the physical gold uh, it replaced pound with the us dollar Oh, I see. And which year did this like happen at all? Like after Second World War. Okay, forty-five after. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. So it is. It is very clear that gold is the real currency, and rest all is just fake. So, uh, what we are seeing from twenty fifteen is the Prime Minister first came with a gold monetization scheme oh. in twenty fifteen. Uh -huh. because he thought that indians have more gold than more than the entire central banks of the world put together okay. so he thought we can de-dollarize just with the help of indians okay. but nobody gave their gold that <laughs> happened oh, nobody gave it nobody gave it so then the brics nations decided to collect physical gold in small small quantities because uh, brics are not building a single country reserve currency So they do not require so much gold to be accumulated. Every country can have a very tiny proportion, and that is more than enough to de-dollarize. And when you talk of this, it was because it was because the US had a single country reserve currency. They needed to accumulate so much gold. Okay. We are going to a multi-currency basket, so all countries need to collect only tiny. Okay. Correct. Correct. So, uh, what I understand in uh, this discussion is, you know, multipolar is one thing. Then gold is making a comeback, as you said. So that means, you know, among the BRICS nations, there has to be good cooperation and not like you know military conflict. No, <laughs> no, this is all Western propaganda that India and China has border issues. That this country is not good with that thing. Well, in a multi-currency basket, a bilateral conflict does not make any difference. Okay, okay. When it is a multi-currency basket, how does it affect any bilateral conflict? Mm. It doesn't. Correct. It is only when there is a single country reserve currency that you have to always keep US happy. 
Oh, I see. Okay. In a multi-currency trade, it doesn't matter if you have wars with each other. Okay, okay. You, you can still trade with Sri Lanka. You can still trade with Russia. You can still trade with Japan. Okay. And now, like last two three days, there's been this bloodbath in the you know world stock market with Japan, of course, uh, starting it. So <laughs> maybe this is the last uh, thing we discuss for today. Like, uh, where do you think the world is heading, like stock market wise? No, it is. Uh, I've uh, predicted about this last year itself when uh, the new Bank of Governor, uh, Bank of Japan Governor came to position. Oh. I've I've written written in my tweet. The era of crisis has arrived. Okay. So you got to understand that this entire idea of de-dollarization uh, comes from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So it was. This is my understanding. So already giving a disclaimer. So as soon as the Chief Minister's visa was rejected, Gujarat Chief Minister, ah. Uh, Narendra Modi ji said on that very same day that I'm going to line up Americans for visa over here. Mm -hmm. So uh, immediately after that, you had the, uh, you know, Shinzo Abe ji came to Gujarat and uh, even the prime minister used to visit them. And we understood that the gift city in Gujarat uh, was planned as the de-dollarization hub for the world. And... Uh, uh, Japan becomes a partner country for the state of Gujarat. Mm -hmm. uh, vibrant Gujarat summits are oh. done. Oh, okay. And then Gujarat model becomes ready. And then Gujarat model is pitched across the Bharat. And then the prime minister becomes prime minister. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, and why did you see so this, this, this person, he came like when this change happened in the like Japanese bank, why did you say that was the indication? Like what's the logic behind that? Because it is, it is, it is Bank of Japan, which is going to trigger the crisis. This entire de-dollarization thing. So they have a big chunk of US treasuries with them. Okay. And the two, and the two rate hikes, which Bank of Japan did, uh, coincided with the stock market wipeout that we are seeing. Yes, 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 yes. Right. So it is Japan which is arranging for the rate cut in the US, for the US elections. Okay. okay. So Japan took a rate on itself to trigger uh, a rate cut possibility for the American citizen. Wow. So now, so now there will be a rate cut. <laughs> and and I mean maybe this is you know very strong diplomatic you, you could say you know victory maybe for you know the US or maybe they, they, they control no, the, they have always been they always been treating allies like this so it's nothing okay. new about it okay and Japan has uh, Japan has been exploited beyond limits oh uh, they have always been facing this kind of uh, stuff from the US. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, uh, of course, we could go on and on discussing. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll uh, do, do it uh, again some other time. Thank you very much, Ankitji, for your uh, availability. Yes. And great to meet you for the first time. And the viewers, please, I will put all his website and you also do consultations. Can you speak a bit on that? Um, so based on my geoeconomic projections, a lot of NRIs, uh, they asked for virtual consulting for their career and how they should move wealth, which country and stuff like that. And then there are companies also who would want to decide their business strategy, which country, what kind of business can be done uh, based on the kind of geopolitical uh, foreseeing that I do. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of clients who connect me for that. So there's an email ID, drshawvirtual at the red gmail.com or Absolutely. Great, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll pin all details in the description. And please, if you are interested, which I'm very sure you are already, <laughs> please <laughs> send a mail to Ankiji. And please also, last but not the least, write down in the comments which other topics you would love to hear from him. I'm sure there are a dozen topics, and we'll I'll try my best to bring him back again. All right. Thank you so much, Ankiji. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.